Hello and welcome to our virtual service for All Saints on this 21st of June, the second Sunday of Trinity and of course Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Just before I read the Gospel for the day and say a few words about it, one or two things to highlight on our bulletin this week. Do have a look and read through those pages as usual. First of those is that we're planning to run an online alpha course. I won't explain here what that's about. You can uh, look it up online, but a really good opportunity for anyone to explore faith a bit more deeply. We're doing that week beginning Monday 6th of July and everyone's invited. Details are on the sheet, so have a look. We're doing that in conjunction with New Street Church. And then the weekend before that, the 3rd to the 5th, we're committing together with the other churches in the area to a 24-7 weekend of prayer, praying from Friday evening through to Sunday evening. And again, details are on the bulletin, but it would be really good for you to have a look at that to see if you could commit to pray, praying for an hour during that time. And then thirdly, just to acknowledge that the day in which I'm speaking, that Saturday, is, uh, is Refugee Day and part of the UN Refugee Week. And the prayers that we have put this week are focusing on the issues of those who have fled their homelands and are looking for somewhere new to call home. So again, do take those prayers with you into the week. But now today's reading is from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, and it's one of those ones that I think makes a preacher's heart fall. It's uh, some tricky stuff, some of which I've tried to address in the a deanery bulletin and the deanery a reflection that you can find online. And I'll say just a word or two more after I've finished reading. But hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instruction. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, Proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's old household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter me that more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake We'll find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. As I say, not an easy passage, and I'm certainly not going to try to explain it here now. In the Deanery Reflection, I've uh, commented that this passage has three of the reputedly 365 instances in the Scriptures when we are told, do not be afraid, do not fear. And, well, in many senses, that's a comfort, but it's also a rather a puzzling command. It's a bit like, don't worry, isn't it? 
you think, oh, yikes, what should I be worried about? And here Jesus gives us plenty to be afraid of. There's the acknowledgement that being a Christian is a tough life. It can lead to persecution, difficulties, even martyrdom and death. But what I haven't done in the written bit is to say why we shouldn't be afraid. And I think Jesus just gives us three hints here of encouragement, three reasons why actually as Christians we can live free from fear. And those are really important. The first of them is, rather puzzlingly, for all will be revealed. Jesus says, have no fear of them, that's the opponents, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. In other words, I think Jesus is saying, ultimately, justice and truth will triumph. All those hidden motivations that cause violence and greed and, and some of the horrors in the world, they will be revealed for what they are, small minded and selfish. Ultimately, Jesus' identity and mission will be seen for what it is, the truth of the kingdom of God invading the world. And ultimately, for those who've done their best to follow Jesus, their, their endeavours, their efforts will be vindicated. So don't be afraid because it'll all come out in the wash. Ultimately, it will be seen that what you've been doing is the right thing and for the right reason. And the second reason Jesus gives that we should not be afraid is that God cares for every detail of our lives. We're not doing this on our own. We're not doing it unseen or unacknowledged. He says this and uh, are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. Well, let's acknowledge that's a bigger job for some than for others. But the point being that God knows absolutely every detail of our lives, that he watch over us, that he cares for us. And even when we feel at sea, even when we feel perhaps abandoned and lost, no, if God cares for the, the sparrows, the, the birds, the insects, the rest of creation, how much more he cares for each one of us. So don't be afraid because we're not alone. And then the third reason Jesus gives why we shouldn't be afraid. Well, that's to do, I think, with the bigger picture, with our eternal security. He says this, everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. In other words, a life that is spent in faith in Christ, believing him, trusting him and seeking to walk his way will be acknowledged. At the moment, it may seem the narrow path, trying to go through the small door. It may seem harder than swimming with the tide, but in the end, again, this will be acknowledged we will be uh, seen and accepted, known and loved. So do not be afraid. Jesus says time and time again, and, and yet, if you're anything like me, fear can become rather a paralyzing force, not just for individuals, but as I suggest for the church too. But perfect love casts out all fear. If we know and experience and begin to pass on some of that perfect love, a life free from fear is possible. So do not be afraid. Why? Well, because all will be revealed. Because God sees, cares and knows for us. And because our heavenly future is assured. So may we know something of those promises and those assurances in the week ahead, especially when we are inclined to fear. There's lots in the world that we might be afraid of. And yet let's know God through his spirit and in his son by our side with us and in us in the week ahead. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, drive away fear and keep us in peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit 
be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. Now, just to say that from next weekend, Bren and I are going to have a few days uh, staycation on holiday, so we'll be out of circulation, but probably not very much out of the area. So I'll try and prepare something for you for next week. But from the uh, next Saturday until the following Friday, we hope to be away. So we'll see you when we get back. Bye bye.